Hey everyone, I'm Deborah Johnson. Welcome back to my channel. Thanks for joining me again. So I'm back with another Dear Deborah Letter. And for those who don't know, Dear Deborah Letter is just a series that I just started. And it's just um, pretty much a series where I answer any questions or scenarios that you would like advice on, godly advice. So if you'd like to send me a letter, I do answer them anonymously. You can go ahead and send it to me to my email, which is heartofworship2010 at gmail.com and put the subject as Dear Deborah Letter. Again, that's heartofworship2010 at gmail.com with the subject Dear Deborah Letter. And I will answer them anonymously in the order that I receive them. The information for that is also in the description box below. Alrighty, so I'm just gonna get right into it. This letter is pretty short, um, so this video shouldn't be too long. So I'm just gonna go ahead and read the letter first and then give my response. Alrighty, so greetings, dear sister. I'm 21 years old, female from India. I recently came through your videos and you related to me so much. The way you said God's testing you and we have to wait patiently, everything was a cure for me at the situation. I've been in a relationship with an unbeliever for three and a half years before three months we broke up because he said we he can't continue this because of religious differences and the family won't accept us no matter what. Okay, so I literally begged him to stay with me and fight for our love, but he refused saying he can't give me hopes for something that won't happen. Then he said we can be in touch and we'll be each other's well-wishers and we'll support each other as usual. Um, when time comes, we'll talk at our house, at our home, and we'll give a try. This is what he said after our breakup. And since then, we have been continuing to talk as usual and the same bond ex exists between us. He still cares for me and is loving towards me. Many Many a times after my breakup happened, I wondered if this is God's work for something better to happen in our situation. I'm praying for him to know God and for us to get married with God's grace and parents' blessings, probably after some years. I really do wonder if this man is the one sent from me, sent from God or not. Should I stay with him or should I walk away? This is a question I would ask God most of the times and kind of God makes me talk to him somehow. What is your view on this? Can you pray to God on my behalf and ask if this person is my eternal partner? I really want him, but afraid of our families. Please pray for me, sister. Okay. Um, first, I do want to, you know, just, you know, kind of, um, you know, just say sorry for your breakup. I know that it can be really hard and it's heartbreaking. I'm, I'm sure their breakup is not easy at all. It's definitely something that takes time to heal from. So I just want to start off with that. And um, I also want to say that first and foremost, I do believe that this is God's protection for you. This breakup is God's protection. And the fact that him nor the two families are for it, and it seems like it's really all because you guys are not of the same religion. Um, you're Christian and he's not. Um, and I think this is God's protection. And even though it hurts, um, I think you should thank God for the closed door because you really don't know what this relationship, this marriage could have led to. And I think a lot of times, um, and you are going to feel the pain. You're going to go through that emotional, you know, pain, the tears. It's natural. You guys were together for three years. That's a lot of time spent. That's a lot of time getting to know each other. And it's kind of like you're ripping, you know, your skin apart. So I, I definitely understand that. But as you're healing, really think about it from a biblical and Christian point of view. The Bible tells us that we should not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. And that, I believe that's in 1 Corinthians. Um, we shouldn't be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. What does light have to do with darkness unless it's there to reprove it? So you really don't know what God is protecting you from. You really don't know. A lot of times we, we really do not know. If we could just see a glimpse of what our future would look like, if we continue with a certain person or we continue down a certain path, we would thank God, even though it hurts now, that closed door hurts now, thank God for his protection because this is literally God's protection. And it may be coming in the form of pain right now, but later on, as you grow, as you understand, and as you begin to see what God does have for you, you're gonna say, thank you, Lord. You know, I promise you, you're gonna say, thank you, God. Um, so accept the closed door right now and thank God for his protection. And don't ever beg somebody to stay with you. Do not, especially 
when they're leaving you because of something like your religion, you guys are not on the same page as far as your your belief in Jesus Christ. Don't don't beg somebody to stay with you. You're a lot more valuable, you know, and like I said, it's God's protection. Alrighty, so second is that you asked, should I stay with him or should I walk away? Well, you also say that he does not want to continue the relationship. He broke up with you. He doesn't want to continue because of religion. So whether you want to stay or not, I think he's already made his decision and you should honor that decision. But most importantly, like I said, thank God and honor God for what he's allowing to happen. Um, God has already graciously closed the door. He's, he's kind of done the work for you. Um, and I was even telling a friend, sometimes, sometimes God just has to do it for us for our own sake. Sometimes God has to do these things for our own sake because he knows that maybe we're not, we're not going to do it. And that's really the love of God, the protection of God for you. So God has already graciously closed the door. Don't try to bang it down. Because really in this letter, it seems like God has closed the door and you're like, bang, 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 trying to knock the door down. Listen, let it go. Let him go. Let the relationship go and allow God to do what he wants to do in your life now. Um, accept the closed door. Let God heal you and move on. If it is of God, then God will save his soul. He will fill him with his spirit. And later on, God will allow your paths to join again and he'll, he'll build that relationship on a godly foundation. But right now, that relationship is not built on Christ. And we know that anything that's not built on Christ is going to crumble. The foundation is not stable. So let him go. And if it's God's will, he will get saved because it is, it is absolutely God's will for you to marry a believer. If you're a believer, it is absolutely God's will for you to marry a believer. So if it is God's will, he will get saved and God will bring the two of you back together and build it on a godly foundation. So let it go. Don't worry about if you should get back with him or not. No, you should not get back with, with him. You should definitely walk away. Um, and then you also mentioned that God makes you talk to him somehow. Um, I don't know. It sounds as if maybe you guys somehow meet up or you end up just seeing each other. Um, I think that sometimes um, we think that God is making something happen or God is allowing something to happen when it's just natural circumstances. If you guys see each other maybe at school or if you see each other at work, if you see each other in, in a town, maybe you live in the same neighborhood, you're naturally going to see each other. And if you know each other, you're naturally going to talk and say hello and check up on each other. That's not necessarily God making you talk to him. That's just you seeing him because he's along your path. So don't assume that just because you may see him here and there, or just because you guys may bump um, bump into each other, that God is making you. Don't, don't receive that as confirmation. Like, You've already seen the red flags. God has already told you. I mean, God has already allowed the relationship to break up because of something as important as your faith. Take that as God's protection. Take that as a closed door. And don't, don't try to convince yourself of something otherwise because you guys see each other from time to time. All righty. And you mentioned that you're afraid to let go. Perhaps you're afraid to let go because you're afraid that you won't find someone else. Maybe you're you're afraid that you've invested so much time, three years. Three years is a very long time. So maybe you're afraid that you've invested three years and you don't want that time to be wasted. There could be many reasons why you're afraid, but you're definitely afraid to let go. And you need to ask God to search your heart as far as why you're afraid. And don't be afraid. You're 21. You're still young. And I know that may sound crazy because a lot of people think by, you know, a certain age, I got to be married. But your time is in God's hands. And the more time you waste trying to hold on to something that God is trying to pull away and pry away from your hands, the more time that you literally waste. You could be, you know, you could be preventing, you could be holding something up that God has. You could be holding up the man that God does have for you. Um, and I truly believe that, and this is for other people, like sometimes um, we're, it, if you place this man, if you continue to place this man in this position of you guys still bonding and things like that, and if you're still trying to make the relationship work, you could be hindering what God does want for you. Because I can assure you that the man that God wants for you is the man that's going to love God and honor God and, and love God more than he loves you. And um, it's up to you to choose the man that you want or to choose the man that God wants for you. The choice is yours. But the man that God wants for you is a man that's going to love God more than he loves you. So don't be afraid to let him go, okay? Um, so next, you mentioned that we continue to talk as usual. 
and the same bond exists between us. Okay, so I really want to touch on this. So you said we continue to touch to talk as usual and the same bond bond exists between us, but we've broken up. So if you've broken up with somebody and you're continuing to talk as usual and the same bond exists, your usual is you guys being together. Your usual is you guys being boyfriend or girlfriend. So even though you said that you've broken up, you're still you're you're still invested emotionally. You're still invested in your time as usual, as you guys being boyfriend or girlfriend. And that does not make any sense. And I really want to highlight this point because a lot of people say they've broken up, but emotionally, they're still together. They still talk the same. They still, everything still says and is pointing to the fact that they're together, but they said in speech that they've broken up and it doesn't make any sense. And you're still, you're still emotionally investing yourself in this person if you guys have not truly separated and parted ways. If you know that, number one, you guys aren't together, and I really believe that this is God separating you, like I said, because of religion, and if God is doing that, do not continue to emotionally invest yourself into this relationship. Do not continue to, to have your heart, because pretty much what you're saying is my heart is still completely open. His heart is still completely, we're still open to each other, even though we're breaking up, even though we know that we're not going to get married, even though we know that our families are for it, our hearts are still open. So you're opening yourself to more hurt, more pain. And that's why I said you need to let it go. It's a closed door. Allow God to close that door. You close it emotionally. Leave it on a high by basis or just being casual, casual, casual friends or acquaintances. But do not continue to talk to each other as usual. Do not continue to bond as usual because you're setting yourself up for more heartbreak. Because let's say, for example, you continue to talk and bond as usual. This man, I'm sure, eventually wants to get married. When he does find another girlfriend or another significant other i guarantee you that she's gonna have a problem with you guys talking as usual i guarantee you that she's gonna have a problem with you guys bonding as usual and i guarantee you that once he finds somebody else he's gonna be like hold on i know my new girl is not gonna be okay with me bonding with my old girlfriend so let me cut this off and then you're gonna be heartbroken even though you guys said that you already broke up so if you've broken up break up for real break up completely do not continue to bond as usual, do not continue to talk as usual. Break up and leave it at that, okay? And allow God to heal you emotionally. Allow God to do what he needs to do do with you. Detach from that, okay? Um, and also make room for what God has for you. Because I truly believe that sometimes we we keep people in a place that they should not be in our lives. In a, uh, in a position that they should not be in our hearts. To the point where when God is ready to bring that person that he has for us. There's no room for them because somebody else is taking that place. If this guy is in speech, not no longer your boyfriend, no longer your potential husband, but really he he he's still taking that place in your heart. When God is ready to bring your significant other, he has no room. There's where can God place him? Where can he come? How can he come into your life when that position is already filled by somebody who's not even gonna marry you? So let him go and make room for what God wants. Who knows? God could heal you quickly and send your the spots that he does have for you within months don't limit god it could be within months it could be within years but you need to go through that process of detaching from the old healing from the old and preparing your heart as god prepares you for the new okay so please and and this is for everyone that's listening if you have broken up with somebody and they're still there in your heart in that position whether you guys talk a lot or you still think about them or you still like them like allow god to, to detach you from that so that you're not holding on to something that you should have been let go and so that you don't end up hurting yourself more in the long run and so that you have your heart is ready and you're in position for the person that god does have because if you believe that you're going to get married one day if you believe this god does have somebody for you why not be ready why not have that position open why have a bunch of other counterfeits and the other maybes and other almost when God has someone for you, like prepare that place, you know, I'm sure as a woman or as a man, you wouldn't like it if, you know, you were getting ready to come into somebody's life and you know that God has said that you guys are going to be married or you're interested in that person, but they're talking to multiple people, you know, they're still with other people. It's going to make it even more complicated and you definitely don't want to, you know, be in a relationship or a situationship and then quickly jump to another you want you want time to heal you want time to, to really let god do what he needs to do okay so let it go completely let it go completely and make room for what god has for you for who god has for you in the future all right 
So the next point is that I really believe based off of your letter that this relationship has become an idol for you. And one of the telltale signs is that the way that you're fighting for this relationship, in spite of all the red flags, in spite of the closed doors, in spite of the fact that this relationship does not even honor the word of God, shows that it is an idol for you. You want this. You said that you begged him. You begged him to stay. You're asking, should I stay or should I go? Even though he is not a believer, even though the families don't want you guys together most likely because of religion, even though he himself does not want to be with you because of religion, you're still fighting for this. He is not a child of God. He does not believe in Jesus Christ. Um, you said that you're Indian, so most likely maybe he's Hindu. And that, that opens the door to a host of other things. Consider your relationship more than this marriage. Love God, honor God, desire God more than you desire to be with this man. If you desire to be with him more than you desire to be in alignment with God's word, if you desire to be with him more than you, you want to live according to God's word, if you desire to be with him more than you desire to have a godly marriage, which honors God, which, which honors and helps to build the kingdom, it shows that this relationship, this three year long relationship has become an idol for you. You love this relationship and you love this man more than you love God. Even though I'm sure you would say that no, you love God more, your actions and the things that you say in, in this letter show that you love God more. And I really want everyone else who's listening to evaluate their hearts. When we want something that dishonors God more than we want God, more than more than we want to please God, that thing has become an idol. When God has told us no about something, when God has closed the door, when God has allowed certain things to happen to show us that something is not from him, when, when something is clearly against the word of God, yet we still want that thing, that thing is an idol. And that's an area that we need to allow God to tear down. We need to allow God to tear, that, tear down those idols so that we can put him back in that place. Your prayer should be, God, send me the man of God, the spirit-filled, Bible-living man of God that you have for me. I want that more than I want anything else. Even though I love this guy, even though we, we've been together for three, three years, even though we've invested so much, even though we're emotionally attached, even though we've connected and even though we have a good thing and we have chemistry and all this stuff, God, I want you. I want to honor you in your word more than I want this man. Make sure he's not an idol, idol in your life, but I do believe that he is. So allow God to tear down that idol. All right. So the next point is that, and which is the last point, you really don't want the heat and the, the burden, the consequences that are going to come from marrying a man that is not a believer. Many people, when it comes to relationships, they just think as long as we love each other, that's good. But to be honest, if the both of you do not love God and if the, bo the both of you are not equally yoked and you're both not, if, if the both of you are not believers together, walking together, you are going to face some things that you will regret. Okay, I, I get emails as well from people who have married and been with someone that was not saved. They saw all the red, even if the person said they were saved, they knew, knew that this person wasn't really living for God. They saw all the red flags. They got a bunch of warnings. They ignored it. They convinced themselves that God confirmed and God said and God allowed. They got married and now they're living in pure hell. Now they regret it completely. You have no clue what God is protecting you from by closing this door, by allowing one situation after the other, after the other to pretty much shut this door in your face this is the love of god for you this is the protection of god and like i said earlier years from now you will thank god that he closed this door and that you did not walk down this path as a wife myself i can tell you that the husband makes the final decisions in your home the two of you make decisions together but your husband makes the final decisions and his, if his decisions and his leading if he's not leading from god from the word and you want to lead from, from the word as a discerning wife, as a wife that's, that's submitted to the word of God, as a wife that's going to want to, you want to live your life as unto God. Everything that you do in your, and as a believer, everything that you do in your life is according to God's word. You're going to make decisions according to God's word. You're going to, you know, do things, go places according to God's word. And as a husband and wife, you guys have to, your life has to be governed by something. And if that man is the leader and his, his life, his decisions are not governed by God, there's going to be division there. You know, the Bible says in um, 
Matthew chapter 12, verse 25, that every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation and every city or house divided against itself cannot stand. You guys are going to be divided. You're already divided. You're already divided now as, husband, as boyfriend and girlfriend. You're already divided. So why take two people that are divided? You're already divided. Why come together in a covenant? A covenant means an agreement. It means a, 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 a bond. A covenant. Why come together in agreement when you're not in agreement? Why come together in agreement? How can you come together in agreement in a covenant? In the marriage covenant, one of the greatest covenants that you will ever make aside from your covenant with God. How can you come together in agreement when you're not in agreement? When you're when he believes in something else and you believe in Jesus. That's going to be pure hell for you. That's going to listen. You don't want that. And you don't I don't know what religion he believes in. But if you really want your house to be a house of God, a house filled with the Holy Spirit, you don't want your husband, your head, inviting other spirits into that household. And then when you guys have children, the way that you raise your children is going to be based on what you believe. You believe in Jesus. You believe in being baptized. You believe in raising them up according to the word of God. You believe in training them up in the ways of God. He's going to believe in whatever religion he believes. Those children are going to raise up in a confused household. There's going to be friction in that house. There's going to be arguments and disagreements. You as a wife are going to have conviction from God. You're going to have a burden on you to pray and intercede about something that you should have never stepped into. You're going to have a burden on you that God never called you to. God, listen, if you know better, you can do better before you say, I do. So because you know that God, God's will is not for you to be with someone that you're not married, that um, that is not a believer. Do not say I do to something that was never God's will. Do not say I do this to something that you should have that you should have said I will not. I will not. Do not step into that. I'm telling you as a warning. Do not step into that. You will regret that. Every single person that's listening to me right now, whether you're male or female, if you are a child of God, a believer of Jesus Christ, do not get into a relationship or marry someone that is not a believer. You're gonna regret that. I promise you. I promise you, and not to say that that person can't get saved later on. It happens. I've heard of stories where two people were unbelievers. One of them got saved. The, the, the saved spouse prayed and interceded and carried the burden of intercession for that, for that unsaved spouse. And they went through and, you know, they went through the persecution. And you will go, go through the persecution in your home. They went through the persecution and the person eventually got saved. But there are many who that does not happen to. Imagine if his family is also not a believer, which I'm sure they're not. You're not only going to face persecution from your from your husband if you marry this man, but you're going to face persecution from his family. I mean, even when you're saved and you have saved in-laws, sometimes that in itself can still be difficult because, you know, people are people and sometimes family can try to interfere, interfere in, your, in your marriage. But imagine if they're not saved. You're signing up for something that you really don't want, and I, I guarantee you that. So I highly recommend that you do not marry him. Um, I highly recommend that you don't step into a home that is already divided. Okay, so my advice finally is to let go and let God heal you. Um, I know that it hurts and I do sympathize with your pain. I know that you've invested time, emotions, most likely invested money. I, I understand, but I'm telling you, God is closing those doors. Don't try to bang it down. Don't pray and ask God to 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 um to open that door. Your prayer, if anything, should be his salvation. Your prayer should be his salvation. Finish the breakup, break up completely. Don't almost break up. Don't break up but still go on as usual. Don't break up and still bond as usual. No, break up completely. Continue to keep him in prayer. Let God heal you. Let it go and move on. If it is God's will, God will save his soul and bring you guys back together and you will know that it's God. But I can guarantee you right now, him being unsaved, it is not God's will for you guys to get married. And this is God's protection and love. You should see the love of God in this. If you have to, if you really have to and you really wanna know, I encourage you to go look up some stories about women and men who have married, especially women who have married unsaved husbands and, and go find out what they're going through. That might encourage you to go ahead and, and just not do this to put an end to this because it's going to be best for you. Do what God is, is allowing to happen, which is these closed doors, and close it off completely. Shut it down completely, all right? So, um, yeah, I'm going to continue to pray for you. I, I'll definitely, I pray for everyone who sends me letters and things. I'm going to be praying for God to heal your heart, um, 
to open your eyes to see. I'm going to even pray for God to show you, give you a glimpse of what it could be like if you marry this man unsaved. Because girl you you don't you don't want that battle you really really don't so i'm going to continue to keep him prayer pray for god to heal you and you'll be fine you'll be all right as, as god heals you he is the master healer he will heal you he'll send somebody that's way better that's, that's saved that loves him and i promise you you will thank god for this closed door all right so i love you all and that's it for today's letter um this was dear deborah letter number three i'll be posting more in the future and other videos as well Thanks for watching. If you would like to send me a letter, you can send it to the e to my email at heartofworship2010 at gmail.com with the subject, Dear Deborah Letter. The information for all of that is in the description box below. If you enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe. Comment and let me know what you think. If you have other words, of, if you've gone through something like this, where you almost married somebody that wasn't saved and you were battling with it, encourage our sister in the comments below. I definitely don't mind. Just definitely keep it um biblical advice um so yeah follow me on social media i um you can follow me on facebook instagram and twitter i also have a facebook page deborah johnson heart of worship facebook page you can follow me on there thanks for watching i hope this video encouraged and blessed you and i hope that it helps some of y'all come out of some really bad relationships or situationships and i pray that it's leading you down the path of righteousness the purpose of all of this is to really help someone and to draw you closer to God. We want to honor God more than we want relationships, more than we want a spouse, more than we want anything. We want to honor God above all. Um, I pray that this encourages you to surrender your life to Christ. My, my whole thing is to really help and encourage people to say yes to God on a daily basis. So I pray that this bless you. If it did, let me know in the, in the comments below. Love you all and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.